um, you have the Carabao Cup down as well as the Africa Cup. And um, the quadruple beat definitely lives on, talking about the elusive four-title win that has never been achieved by an English team. They have the UEFA Champions League final against Real Madrid on the 28th of May, and they have their four points behind Manchester City, having played a game less. So it's all about the dream for Liverpool and what a time it is to be a cup for Liverpool fans under the Jurgen Klopp era. It's on that note, I say good afternoon and welcome to another edition of the show. It is the first for the week and for Liverpool fans that are buzzing, for Chelsea fans, well, so close yet so far once again. Welcome to the show. I'm Samson Olede and this is the arena. I'm not doing this alone. I've got Rotimia Kindele with me, a veteran sports journalist who is definitely an award-winning one at that, who joins me via the phone. Rotimi, good afternoon and welcome to the show. Good afternoon, Samson. Talking about weekend matches in the Premier League, we're yet to have a title winner and the Manchester City no doubt have their destiny in their hands, but they suffered a blip on that road to triumph, We're talking about their title defense. 2-2 two -two, um, against West Ham that ended. Surprisingly, there were two goals behind, but they fought back as champions do, and Riyad Mahrez fluffed his line from 12 yards, you know, to win them the game. What do you make of this blip, um, considering, um, you know, Liverpool still have two games to play? Uh, well, uh, it's, it's all about uh, managing your team. As yes. well. Don't forget, Matthew also had injuries to some big players. Exactly. To defense. And that's why you have to see, uh, you have to see an agent, uh, I mean, permit me to use that word, Fernandio. Yes, for Manchester City. At the center half, mm -hmm. you know, which is not the best of option, if you ask me. Uh, I don't think there's too much trust on Nathan Ake. So maybe that's why he's not even getting a look in at uh, this point. At this point. time, yeah. But then, yeah, but then again, you also need experience. You need uh, people that could motivate on the pitch. And luckily for City, they've got one or two more than two players that could do that for them mm -hmm. when, they, when, when the day is going south. And, and that was what happened in that game against West Ham. 2-0, they looked jaded at the back. Uh, Edison was exposed several times. Yes. But then they came back in the second half, managed to come back, got two goals, two clean goals. And then when that penalty uh, situation came, I mean... Uh, they were all happy, like, yes, we've done this again. Mm -hmm. But hey, everybody, anybody can lose a penalty. Exactly. And then there's pressure somewhat. Mm -hmm. You know, the pressure, the pressure is the fact that, yes, we're not playing for anything, what we are focusing on. These guys have probably torn this script around for us, talking about West Ham. And then when that penalty means happened, you could see the disappointment yep. that, oh, even with what we have, we've been able to uh, come this far. But man, they probably would just keep their heads high, four points clear. Going to the final day, it's a home game against against Aston Villa. Yes. So um, I don't expect anything to go. I don't expect Aston Villa to be at home. Okay. You know that, but but then they can't afford to draw as well. Hopefully, the likes of Laporte, the likes of Diaz, maybe maybe, maybe. they can face a little bit yeah. to come back. But the bleed is also as a result of sitting missing out on some key players. Some key players, yes. Okay, I'm um, still reviewing the weekend. We have to talk about the Italian Serie A. That's the other top flight league in Europe that doesn't have a winner at this time, though. We should have a winner over the next one week. AC Milan at home against Atalanta. Atalanta chasing Europa League football. Um, it was a tough call you would expect on paper. But over the course of 90 minutes, it looks more like um, uh, AC Milan won convincingly, especially Anades' goal. What do you make of the victory? And then this is the goal was brilliant, no yes. doubt. Uh, for the first time in 11 years, AC Milan can actually get win this Scudetto. Yes. The fans had waited that long, and that's why you could see uh, you saw the turnout over the weekend. Oh. Atalanta was meant to be their biggest test. Test, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it was meant to be the biggest stumbling block um, going. I mean, you know, as they chase that or they hide that Scudetto. E yeah. But Gasparini and this team have not been particularly consistent, especially this. Yes. And they showed that, that again over the weekend. Nothing to write them about. Uh, just a lackluster performance. It wasn't like they made it easy for AC Milan, but AC Milan as well. It's not like uh, they've been that solid team all, all across the season. So mm -hmm. they took advantage of a, a lesser team who, who probably has uh, nothing to, 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 to play for, you know. They want to play in Europe, talking about the last year. Yes. But how well are they, are they done? They, this they season, yeah. They have that place in Europe. I don't think so. They are okay. based on their last because well, they're currently eight on the lock. Mm -hmm. If they get a chance to win, uh, to even yep. get any European spot, maybe uh, due to Fiorentina messing things up. Exactly. And, then maybe they and Roma as well. The conference league. 
and Roma and so on. Yes. Yeah, what the Mercedes was speaking to the conference, mm-hmm. if you are into that, I'm not talking about Atalanta. Yes. But there was no fight in that game. Milan thoroughly played well, played better, and deserved that win. Hoping that their rivals, I mean, Inter Milan, or drop points against Cagliari, yeah. and then they can start partying. You could see signs of the party. <laughs> yeah. Now, it's not like they were partying, you know, too early. But yeah. because they knew, they, they knew before the game that Atalanta was the uh, biggest, biggest And now that we've got the three points, hey, our final okay. game, we'll, we'll make it. You know, and that's where we are now. Yeah. So they, they need just a draw. Do you think they can make it? Just a draw against Sao Solo? They can't. Sao Solo is not um, troubled. Sao Solo is not in the relegation zone. Sao Solo is not fighting for okay. Europe. Sao Solo is just a team that is just there. You just know, just there. killing. So, uh, they'll just, they'll just um, wait, see how things pass up. I think they'll get that. They should be able to do enough. They've got big players. They've okay. got players that have won titles in that squad. I can tell them this is what you need to do to make this happen. So I, I don't think they will blow it. I also think if that was good, give it a, a good fight. Okay, um, just before I let you go, we have to talk about some footballing stories. The biggest one that broke yesterday evening has to do about Nigerian football. The NFF finally confirming the appointment of Ose Preserio as um, the coach for the Super Eagles. I have a rejigging of the technical crew, um, Salisi Yusuf, you know, um, giving the number two job in terms of um, the second assistant. Aimbas Finidi George, the first assistant, while Usman Abdullah, the current coach of Kasna United, who won Aimba the league title in 2019, is the third assistant. And you can rest assured someone like Ikesh Romu is also in the mix as the goalkeeper's trainer. What do you make of this reshuffling of the technical crew for the Super Eagles and Ose Pesero's appointment? Oh, well, uh, rooting for Pesero is coming a tad too late. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, we've missed out of the World of Cup the World already. Cup. Uh, I, I don't think there's. I, I don't think. I think it's a brave man for even choosing to accept the job, job at this yeah. point because Nigerians won't tell us. You won't listen to. Oh, well, let's wait for two years. Two, years, for two uh-huh. years to build a team. They want an instant response after that disappointment uh, of not going to Qatar, and and that's why I feel Becerra has been uh, has been brave to even consider. Uh, or consider, uh, to even consider taking up the job, but he's got his experience in yes. Europe, Asia, Africa, South America. So mm-hmm. we'll wait. Um, I mean, those are part of a bit of African football in Han Hartley uh, mm-hmm. and the like. So uh, you, you probably just want to wish him all the best. All the best. But he needs to, yeah, he needs to start early. He needs to pick up early. And like okay. I said, nobody's going to chill. Nobody's going to give him time. Yep. If they, I think he signed a one-year deal, so, and it's very simple. Play the African qualifiers. Get us the Afghan, yes. Take us to the Afghan next summer uh, because the Afghan won't likely happen in January, February, next no. day. It'll happen next sometime next in summer. the summer. Mm-hmm. And then get a good outing. Then let's see if we can extend your contract. So I think Pesero is brave. All the best thing. In terms of reshuffling, um, this is my own personal opinion. Okay. I feel someone coming from Portugal yeah. will probably will struggle a bit mm-hmm. with maybe English. Yes, it's well traveled in terms of language and English and all of mm-hmm. that, we'll show with the Finiti judge who's lived almost all his life in Spain. That's yes. what I feel. Okay, right. um, just before you leave, the NPFL, we had, um, you know, the match day 28 as well over the weekend. And um, Rivers United surprisingly lost away to Atlanta, two goals to nil, while Plato United defeated Wiki Thoris by three goals to one to cut the lead to four points. Ten games left, what do you make of it? Uh, well, I, I still, you know, some weeks ago, all of us were, well, some of us were saying, no, give the title to the Rivers United. To Rivers United. United, yes. Yeah, because, I mean, in Nigeria, once you have, like, a six-point league, a four-point league, it's almost as good as done. You've won the league, expected yes. that you will get to win your own games, mm-hmm. and then when you want to drop points, at least you drop points away from home and not your home games. And that's why uh, folks are saying, no, mm-hmm. just give it to Rivers United. At this point, yes, four points at Prince Rivers and Pitch United. Yes. Uh, except they go into it again before the end of the season. But if there are no fixtures, that, uh, if there's no fixture like Rivers playing Pitch or Pitch hosting Rivers United, I yes. think Rivers will probably go on to win their remaining home games. Okay. Try to get at least a draw on the road and just steal this win this season. But it's a good um, script that we are having in the MPFL. Especially the battle between first and second. The battle between third and fourth is yes. exciting as well. Remo wins the home game, goes uh-huh. third. Rangers wins the home game, goes to third, push Remo down, pushes Remo down to mm-hmm. fourth. And that's the vice battle of the team between Remo and Rangers. So that battle for the 
the continent. The league, but in the top sports, will be very interesting with 10 games left. And then, of course, you know that the final sport for the continent will come from the cup uh, competition. So, it's been quite interesting in the NPSL. Bottom half is not very solid. Not very solid, Tano yes. Pillars, Tano Pillars have said we might be going down. The coach came mm -hmm. out criticizing his players, angry, upset. You can understand because they lost to MFM. Yes. In, uh, in, in, in Ogo State. In MFM State. as well. Uh, banned from Lagos, now playing away from home. Mm -hmm. So they lost they lost that game. And, uh, they, I mean, you want to take advantage of a team playing on a neutral ground. Neutral ground. So you exactly. can understand why Tano Pillars are being frustrated. But we, we, we'll wait really to see this one. Heartland beating uh, River Snyder yep. was a big, big uh, statement for them. Because okay. they also want to try and avoid relegation. Now they have 31 points, one point behind Lopez 2016. Uh, because, uh, so, the, we, we, in an interesting part to note that one, from 14th to 20th, and of course uh, the top of the table as well, where you have the Jews and reverse battling for that, for that term title. Okay, thank you so much, um, Roti Miakindeli, for your time. I, I know the sacrifice you, you had to make. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Game 7 is said to be the best two sports word in sporting world, and that's about basketball. You can be rest assured that we had Game 7 um, yet at the wee hours of today for two different series. And um, Game 7, what a Game 7 it was indeed. Let's delve into some business news as quickly as we can. UEFA has agreed a deal with TikTok that sees the social media giant become a global sponsor of the 2022 European Women's Football Championship. The deal will see TikTok launch a number of dedicated activations on the platform to allow users to customize their own posts, with UEFA also providing its new partner access to an extensive library of assets to develop content. In addition, UEFA is launching an official Women's Euros 2022 account on TikTok ahead of the tournament, which will run from the 6th of July till uh, July 31st. More traditional elements of the partnership include ticketing and hospitality access, and including branding opportunities and other fan activations. The agreement sees TikTok li link up with UEFA again, having been a global partner for the Men's Euro 2020 last year. And just as we wrap up, US Rugby is hoping for a profit of around $1 billion from the 2031 and 2033 World Cups. And in a first for rugby union, the United States was confirmed as the host of the 2031 men's and 2033 women's tournaments after USA Rugby entered into an exclusive dialogue phase with World Rugby last November. That's how much we can take on today's edition of the show. Thanks to Rotimi Akindele who joined me via the phone. And to you out there, I say thank you so much for being the arena. You guys, as I say often, are indeed the MVP. I'm Samson Lady. Until the show comes your way tomorrow, do enjoy the very best of Newcastle United against Arsenal at St. James's Park.